اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دی اسٹوڈنٹ السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہو ٹوڈے اید آور سیونت لیکچر آف پورڈر ایکس رے ڈفریکشن کورس ایکس رے ڈفریکشن ٹکنیک کورس کوڈ ایز فائیو وان تھری فور Dear student, the key concepts of our today lectures are measurements which include sample holders, standard samples, data acquisition, sources of error associated with Bragg Britannu parafoxing geometry, sample displacement error, sample transparency error, other sources of error. And in the last axial divergence, measurements. And first of all, we discuss sample holder in measurements. The choice of sample holder is governed by the choice of instrument geometry used for the border diffraction experiment. Reflection or transmission. Following figure shows various sample holder for the flat plate Bragg Britanno reflection geometry. Flat plate sample holders have one very big advantage over other sample holder, mean they are easy to fill. The biggest disadvantage is that the surface flattening process induced a preferred orientation in most samples other problems include the sample can sometimes fall out especially if spinning with horizontal diffractometers when the sample is vertical or for vertical diffractometers at high theta angles it is difficult to work with air sensitive samples. The holder is quite bulky and so less appropriate for work under non ambient conditions. Peak position from low absorbing sample can suffer from abrasion owing to significant penetration of the beam below the surface. For very tiny amount of sample, for example, for a forensic sample, flat plate geometry is in fact probably the method of choice for the sample can be dusted over the surface of a silicon crystal cut to avoid Bragg diffraction and this gives near zero background. Block samples can also be mounted in a suitable deep flat plate holder. These are the diagram of different sample holder for flat plate Bragg Britannu geometry. All of the large 50 millimeter sample holder A to H are for room temperature work. Well said the other sa smaller sample holders from I to K are for high temperature furnace use. A and B are for stationary samples. A, F and I are for a light dusting of a powder on a low background silicon wafer Whereas H is for small quantities of sample in a shallow well silicon crystal. D is an example of a solid block sample. For example, solid quartz as, as used for diffractometer alignment work. While C is a deep well sample holder. Again for mount, mounting solid objects. G is specially designed for backpacking. 
or even for front packing it is preferable to the plastic holder a and e sample holder j is made of sapphire for transmission geometry either a cylindrical or thin flat foil sample holder is required the most common cylindrical uh, sample holders are glass capillaries as shown in following figure these come in various norm nominal sizes 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.5 0 0.7 1 1.5 and 2 mm are common internal diameter values but other sizes are also available in the laboratory the larger diameter are less useful for most portal diffraction work because of sample absorption and decrease resolution but are very practical for use at synchrotrons given the parallel beam optics and the availability of hard x-rays glass capillary sample holders should be flame grease or glue shield to prevent sample loss they are ideal for low temperature powder diffraction studies as they are easy to cool with liquid nitrogen cooled stream devices and are readily rotated in liquid helium cryostates given they are relatively low melting points soda or borosilicate glass capillaries are usually substituted by quartz glass ones for high temperature work capillaries are unpopular for several reasons firstly diffuse x-ray scattering from the glass walls which are approximately 10 mm thick add significantly to the background count secondly they take considerably longer to fill than the equivalent flat plate sample holder this is a photograph of a 1 mm diameter thin wall 10 mm thick borosilicate glass capillary glued with melted wax into a brass holder for clamping to a spinner the sample is a white organic compound but exposure to an intensive x-ray beam turns it yellow this sample was translated between successive data collection scans to avoid radiation damage resulting in the striped appearance thirdly Capillaries may require careful alignment on the diffractometer to ensure that the axis of the capillary is collinear with that of the diffractometer. Fourthly, for higher absorbing sample, either fine capillaries have, have to be used or the sample has to be diluted and additionally, an absorption correction should be employed when the data are used for crystal structure refinement. After all these disadvantages, you might wonder why capillaries are used at all. The huge advantage of capillary geometry is that preferred orientation is much less far of a problem, although it may still occur. For example, needle shape crystallite may align horizontally rotated capillaries. Capillaries are also a convenient way of mounting very air sensitive samples since they are easily sealed against exposure to the air. An alternative to the capillary is the use of thin glass fiber or even an empty capillary. Thin thinly coated in silicon grease and then covered by a fine coating of powder. This letter may be better for highly absorbing sample. An alternative method for measuring powder samples in transmission geometry is to use a very thin and flat sample. This can be achieved by 
sprinkling the powder onto an adhesive tape or by trapping the sample between two layers of a thin mean 3 micrometer or thinner polymer film various polymers including miller or kapton have been used some of which are better than others the choice of material is the compromise between obtaining a low background count and a peak free background count now standard samples it is essential to know that the diffractometer produces data that are reliable and are not affected by systematic and are other undiscovered errors. Data reliability can be considerably enhanced by pre-checking the diffractometer with the non-standard sample. It is good laboratory practice to do this regularly and essentially when the instrument has been realigned or reconfigured. A standard sample can usually be measured relatively quickly and will provide information on instrument calibration, alignment, resolution, background count, source flux spurious scattering from sample environment equip, equipment and so on even when assured by the person responsible for the instrument that everything is well a few minutes with a standard sample can avoid many months of wasted effort later a good calibration Calibrant for a powder diffractometer should be a material of high symmetry because the intensity of the diffraction planes is concentrated into relatively few diffraction peaks. The unit cell volume V should be small since the intensity of the diffraction peak is inversely proportional to V. Ideally, the unit cell should contain only one or perhaps two crystallographic atoms with large scattering factors. The thermal vibration of the atoms characterized by its B value should be as small as possible so that the high angle peaks have maximum intensity for capillary geometry the sample absorption should not be too high since this can affect in extreme cases the position of the powder line in addition to reducing their intensity it must also be possible to obtain large quantities of the material in high purity and crystallinity together with reproducible crystallite size. Obviously, the material must be air stable and preferably non toxic. Typical standard are powder silicon LAB6. Ni, zinc oxide, titanium oxide, cerium oxide, aluminium oxide, chromium oxide, and yttrium oxide. These samples can be used as calibrant for both X ray and neutron powder diffraction. All the material listed above as a standard have rigid latter structures due to strong chemical bonding with the highly charged cations and anions. Note that a simple material such as sodium chloride does not make a good standard because it is hygroscopic and the sodium ion and chloride ions have large thermal parameter due to their single charge. The National Institute of Standards and Technology NIST up supplies a standard calibrating material for many applications. A standard may be excellent for one purpose, 
for example wavelength calibration and less useful for another for example determination of instrumental resolution so choose a standard appropriate for the task in hand the best example to check the performance of the diffractometer at low angle or layer like mica is one which such material supplied by nist a silver silver behnet which has a layer spacing of 58.38 angstrom silver behnet is a silver salt of the long chain fatty acid behenic acid now data acquisition before collecting a powder pattern it is a good idea to know what information you hope to get out of it for this will influence the data collection strategy parameter to be consider include angular range step size counting time statistical quality wavelength etc for example phase identification generally requires only a range of 2 theta counting the strongest reflection from the sample whereas meaningful ritual refinement of a crystal structure requires high quality data measurement to small d variable count time strategies can improve enormously the statistical equality of the high angle data to compensate for the reduction in scattered intensity with geometric with geometric and x ray form factors thermal motion studies of materials microstructure need precise measurement of the shape of the diffraction peak so a fine step size is desirable along with measurement of an appropriate standard and possibly higher order reflections absorption are the presence of absorption edges will influence the choice of wavelength there are many factors to be considered for optimum data and some forethought and planning will make the difference between a successful investigation and a waste of effort as it is not usually worth struggling to analyze data that is not fit for the purpose despite one's best effort carefully collected data may still suffer from systematic sample error such as preferred orientation granularity texture inhomogeneity impurity phases radiation damage especially at the synchrotron unexpected sensitivity to air or moisture measuring the very small sample again can detect sample evolution during the measurement measurement with a different instrumental geometry can reveal some of the other effects a critical assessment of the data quality and the data collection strategies after the experiment to be encouraged in some cases a new experiment with the revised strategy may be the optimum course now we will discuss different sources of error which are associated with bragg brentano parafoxing geometry many sources of error are associated with the foxing circle of the bragg brentano parafoxing geometry the bragg brentano parafoxing geometry is used so that the divergent x ray beam reconverges at the focal point of the detector 
this produces a sharp well defined deflection peak in the data if the source detector and sample are not all on the focusing circle errors will appear in the data the use of parallel beam optics eliminates all sources of error associated with the focusing circle here is sample here is sample and this is the access to and here is a detector यहां से आपकी जो एक्सट्रेज आएंगी इस सैंपल के ऊपर फॉल करेंगी और ये यहां से डिफ्रैक्ट होंगी और इनको जो है वो डिटेक्टर जो है ये रीड आउट करेगा जो कि हमारे पास एक डिफ्रैक्टोग्राम की फॉर्म में आ जाएगा सैंपल डिस्प्लेसमेंट एरर वेन द सैंपल इज नॉट ऑन द फोकसिंग सर्कल द एक्सरे बीम डज नॉट कन्वर्ज एट द करेक्ट पोजिशन फॉर द डिटेक्टर द ऑब्जर्व पीक पोजिशन इज इन करेक्ट दिस इज द ग्रेटर सोर्स ऑफ एरर in most data this is the systematic error mean delta 2 theta is equal to minus 2 s cos theta over r in radians here s is the amount of displacement r is the goniometer radius at 28.4 degree 2 theta s is equal to 0.006 will result in a peak shift of 0.08 degree ways to compensate for sample displacement this is most commonly analyzed and compensated for using data analysis algorithms for sample id simply remember that your peak positions may be shifted a little bit historically the internal calibration standard was required for publication quality data the computer algorithm for calculating the displacement error are now much better can be minimized by using a zero background sample holder and can also be eliminated by using parallel beam optics here सेम जैसे हमने पिछली डायग्राम के अंदर देखा ये आपकी एक्सेटिव ये डिटेक्टर रिसीविंग स्लेट और सैंपल उसमें आपकी ये रेज जो यहां से डिफ्रेक्ट हो रही थी वो आपकी डायरेक्ट यहां पे डिटेक्टर नोट कर रहा था लेकिन यहां पे देखें कि सैंपल आपका डिस्प्लेस किया हुआ है तो ये यहां पे जो डिफ्रेक्शन है उनको वो डिटेक्टर जो है वो नोट नहीं कर सकता ये आपका एक एरर है कि ये सैंपल आपका जो है वो सर्कल के ऊपर नहीं नौ नेक्स्ट सैंपल ट्रांसपेरेंसी एरर एक्सरेस पेनिट्रेट इनटू योर सैंपल डेप्थ ऑफ पेनिट्रेशन डिपेंड्स ऑन 
the mass absorption coefficient of your sample the incident angle of the x-ray beam this produces errors because not all x-rays are diffracting from the same location in your sample produces peak position errors and peak asymmetry greatest for organic and low absorbing mean low atomic number samples and it can be eliminated by using parallel beam optics can be reduced by using a thin sample सेम जो लास्ट डायग्राम के ये आपकी ट्यूब डिटेक्टर रिसीविंग स्लेट तो यहां पे आपका जो सैंपल है वो आपकी जो गोनियोमीटर सर्कल है उसके ऊपर है उसके मीन उसके साथ है और यहां पे आप देखें कि ये जो है ये यहां से डिफ्रेक्ट हो रही है और ये सैंपल के अंदर से हो रही है यानी कि डिफरेंट ओरिजिन से ये डिफ्रेक्ट नहीं हो रही तो कुछ डिटेक्टर के अंदर जाएंगी और कुछ डिटेक्टर के अंदर नहीं जाएंगी अदर सोर्सेस ऑफ एरर फ्लैट स्पेसिमन एरर द इंटायर सरफेस ऑफ अ फ्लैट स्पेसिमन कैन नॉट लाई ऑन द फोक्सिंग सर्कल creates asymmetric broadening toward low theta angles reduced by using small divergence slit which produced a shorter beam for this reason if you need to increase intensity it is better to make the beam wider rather than longer eliminated by parallel beam optics poor counting statistic the sample is not made up of thousands of randomly oriented crystallites as assumed by most analysis techniques the sample might have large grain size produces random peak intensities and are spotty diffraction peaks Here, ये आपको इसमें यहाँ पे जो डायग्राम के अंदर शो किया गया है कि डिफरेंट एंगल से जो आपकी वो डिफ्रैक्शन हो रही है ये इसको रीड कर रहा है यहाँ पे इसको रीड कर रहा है जबकि इसको ये रीड नहीं कर रहा एक्सियल डाइवर्जेंस एक्सियल डाइवर्जेंस इज ड्यू टू डाइवर्जेंस ऑफ द एक्स रे बीम इन प्लेन विद द सैंपल क्रिएट्स आसमिट्रिक ब्रॉडनिंग ऑफ द पीक टू वर्ड लो थीटा एंगल्स क्रिएट्स पीक शिफ्ट नेगेटिव बिलो नाइंटी डिग्री टू थीटा एंड पॉजिटिव अब टू थीटा reduced by solar slits and are capri lenses now in this diagram you can see this is counts and here is position mean 2 theta and copper used as a anode this indicate mean red line indicate when we use 0.04 radian solar slit and this indicate when we use 0.04 radian incident solar slit and 0.02 radian detector solar slit and blue indicate when we use 0.02 radian solar slits ji to is diagram mein show kiya gaya hai के 
अगर आप 0.04 रेडियन सोलर स्लिट यूज करते हैं तो आपके पास पीक की शेप जो है वो ये वाली होगी और अगर आप 0.04 रेडियन इंसिडेंट सोलर स्लिट यूज करते हैं और 0.02 रेडियन डिटेक्टर सोलर स्लिट यूज करेंगे तो आपकी पीक की जो शेप है वो इस तरह की होगी और अगर आप यूज करें पॉइंट जीरो टू रेडियन सोलर स्लेट जब तो पीक आपकी जो है वो ये वाली होगी इसका मतलब ये है कि अगर आप यूज करेंगे पॉइंट जीरो फोर रेडियन सोलर स्लेट तो आपकी पीक जो है वो शार्प होगी और उसकी जो इंटेंसिटी है वो भी ज्यादा होगी इज इट क्लियर तो ये फर्दर इनकी डिटेल जो है कि स्लिट जो है इंसिडेंट की तरफ या डिटेक्टर की तरफ चेंज करने से या स्लिट का साइज चेंज करने से पीक की जो पोजीशन या पीक की जो शार्पनेस जो है या ब्रॉडनिंग जो है उस पर क्या इफेक्ट होगा उसको हम फर्दर डिस्कस करेंगे जब हम डिफ्रेक्टोमीटर की वर्किंग के ऊपर जाएंगे आई थिंक नेक्स्ट टू लेक्चर के अंदर हम वो डिस्कस करेंगे इज इट क्लियर दिस इज द एंड ऑफ आवर टूडे लेक्चर नाउ स्टूडेंट इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन इन योर माइंड रिलेटिंग टू दिस लेक्चर एंड आवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑफ ऑर्डर एक्स रे डिफ्रेक्शन You can send me your question twenty four seven at my email ID m aslam kamis at the rate of hotmail dot com. Thank you so much. Allah bless all of you.